what are loyalty binds as it relates to being raised by a narcissistic parent? My name is Lise Colucci. I am here to help you understand things related to narcissism and help you heal from that. Hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, and let's get started talking about loyalty binds. This isn't something often talked about in the narcissistic awareness community, but it is something that is related to something any parent can do. And it's often talked about in the step parenting community or the community of people who have, you know, separate households for their children where there's divorce or where there was never marriage where the children are living in two separate households. And so it can really happen though a lot when you have a toxic mother on one end or a toxic father on one end. What are loyalty binds? Loyalty binds are feelings of obligation that the child has for the toxic parent or for, we're going to talk about it in the toxic parent sense. When done with the intent of gaining supply, of it being only about oneself and not about the child and what's actually in the child's best interest, it is toxic. We don't want to create allegiances and alliances with children. We want children to be able to see the truth of people, all people in life, right? And so, at least as they grow up, right? So, so understand that if you see yourself in some of this, I'm not saying you're toxic. What I'm saying is that when these traits are done, when these things are done by toxic people, it can be really difficult on children and it, and it does create a loyalty bind to a toxic person. So basically with a narcissist involved, a child is forced to choose an alliance between one parent or another. Okay. They, this loyalty bind creates a forced situation where the child feels an absolute obligation toward that toxic parent. If you're in the same household, it doesn't necessarily have to be divorced, right? If you're in the same household and the toxic parent is pulling the loyalty away from the not toxic parent, that can happen as well. So in that situation, the child will inevitably choose the narcissist out of fear and out of obligation. So because it's basically the squeakier wheel, that feeling caring child will feel an obligation will feel a sense of needing to protect and care for the emotional well-being of the toxic parent. So remember that to a narcissistic mother in particular and a father, loyalty is the lifeblood. Loyalty toward them, you see this, you know, in in especially with toxic mothers, I think, where the loyalty toward them is all that matters, right? It is seriously intensely uh, demanded respect respect competition and power is what they are seeking from they're seeking power in the situation and they're competitive with the other parent and they are demanding respect of everyone around them this can create a tension and a really high anxiety in children child when they've had these loyalty binds placed upon them can feel guilt about being happy around the other parent or about enjoying time with the other parent and they're actually feeling like they're betraying their other parent just by being around them, right? The not toxic parent. They feel like they're betraying the toxic parent. If they are going against, like fighting these loyalty binds that are being placed on them, often the child is met with silent treatment or lashing out anger or tears or, you know, just toxic frustration at them for paying attention to the other parent or for what looks like a lack of loyalty. They are being taught sometimes, the children are being taught, sometimes the children are even being taught to spy on and report back information about the other parent to the toxic person. So they're being used as basically flying monkeys, right? Against, they will not allow any healthy loving relationships in that child's life. They will not allow teachers, friends, relatives, relations, unless it's someone that they have power over and control. So if they have, say it's a narcissistic mo mother and her mother is someone that will do anything for her, that would be the only relationship that that narcissistic mother would allow in the child's life because she can control that enabler. Now say the other grandparent isn't, she's just, you know, doesn't, she's like kind of, normal with the with the narcissist she maybe doesn't see it but she doesn't doesn't uh, buy everything the narcissist is doing like an enabler would and she won't allow that relationship and, and then in fact she will gaslight and threaten and 
and badmouth and smear that other grandparent so that the child can't be around them or doesn't like them. Another example of what can happen is children are even covertly given way too much information and way too much adult information, adult decision-making information, and then being asked to make decisions for themselves within that situation, which means they have to make a choice between toxic parent and not toxic parent. And so the child is in the middle and then that toxic parent can say, see, the child chose that. That's what's in their best interest because the child chose. So let's look at some examples of what is loyalty binding and how is it created? So I have 10 things written down here that a narcissistic toxic parent will do that then creates loyalty binds. One is they will criticize the other parent. They will put the other parent down, but they will do it in a way that is gaslighting and lying and telling that child things that the child sees, like say somebody forgets things a lot. And then they'll say, like if it's a toxic mother, she might say, oh, your father always forgets everything on purpose. Instead of your father's forgetful, let's remind him, right? Like instead of saying something in a kind way, they'll say it in a way that's very lashing out and very attacking of that other parent to the child. Another thing, and this is what children pick up on more, is the negative tone and body language regarding the other parent. The negative tone and body language the child picks up as a signal, like an alarm, danger, okay? And when a child feels that, they want it to stop. It's scary and it's overwhelming. And so children will try to fix it. Children often don't run from it because that's their mother or that's their father, right? And so because of the built-in loyalty children already have to a parent, and they should have with both parents, it's already built in that this can then pull the bind of that loyalty away from the other person just in their body language, just in their tone of voice. Another thing is arguing in front of the child. They will do it in a way, again, to spin it so that the not toxic person looks like they're at fault. Or they will say things like, I was just setting my boundaries. It's not my fault they argued back. And then the child hears that and they think, yeah, you were setting your boundaries. That's right. When really what they were doing was attacking, right? We know this because we understand how narcissists behave. Another thing is discussing character flaws of the other parent to the child. It is one thing to point out when the child is being hurt by toxic situations, that that is the responsibility of the other parent and, and, and that isn't them. Okay, so if, if you have a child of the, of the age where they can understand and then should be starting to see that their toxic parent is toxic so that they stay safe in their life, because after all, they are growing up with a toxic parent, right? So if they're of that age and you point out that toxic parent's flaws just for no reason, that's what I'm talking about. So that's what narcissistic people do. They will point out your flaws for no reason. So the child has a devaluing sense of you in their mind. That is different than pointing out character traits about the toxic person that need to be said in order for the child to feel safe. If the toxic parents say that it's a toxic father and he never shows up for visitation and the child is hurt by that. And if you point it out saying, I'm sorry that your dad has made the choice to not come, that isn't you being toxic to the parent. That is you pointing out the behavior that happened and that it is not the child's fault. It was the father's choice in that situation, okay? And, or mother's choice if the mother's the toxic one, right? So that's what I'm talking about. There's a difference between pointing it out and just bad mouthing. Another thing that they might do is talk to the child about how much they miss them over and over and over, you know, when they're not with them, or how much they love them and miss them and needed them. And oh, they were so sad when they were gone over and over and over. Of course you wanna tell your child I missed you when you were gone. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about excessively using that. They might ask about other people in the household further triangulating that child with relationships of other people and the toxic parent. In other words, if you say you have a, a divorced household or a separated household or whatever it is where the, the child goes to two homes and say one of the home has other people living in it. It could be anyone, right? Let's say it's a new partner or a, um, a relative living in that house. And they're asking about what's happening in that house and what the other people are doing, not 
because they're concerned for their child's safety in the home because hopefully they can trust that other parent. Let's say they can. Let's say this is a perfectly safe and healthy other person, right? And they're asking about that to triangulate themselves in so that they have a foot into that household. They have little eyes peering into that household that they can then take that information and use against you in your child's eyes. Another thing they'll do is discuss the conversations that you're having with them. So the narcissistic ex that you are have had or if you're still married to them your wife or husband will discuss the conversations and the arguments and everything and to the child not in front of the child but to the child things that are not the child's business does that have to happen now and then yes it does it has to happen now and then but does it have to happen all the time and does it have to happen in a toxic way no i'm talking about they are doing it on purpose to take have a child take sides and of course they're skewing everything to look like they are the victim or they're like so shiny and so rosy and squeaky clean, right? And you're the problem. They will refuse to be civil with you. They'll refuse to be civil with the spouse or with the ex. They'll refuse. They'll re refuse to be even kind at all to the other person in front of the child. They make the child feel responsible for their emotional needs. And this is a big one, right? They will make that child feel responsible for their emotional needs. And we talked about this a little earlier, but you know, guilt tripping, shaming, all of that usually shaming and guilt tripping about the other parent right and so that that child is responsible they will often put fear and anxiety into the child about the other home or about the other parent Ooh, i don't like the way your dad drives with you or uh, if it's a narcissistic mother saying that right or if it's and this is unfounded i'm talking about unfounded things that this other person is not doing anything dangerous or well you have to sleep in your own room over there oh that must be really scary you know, things like that to make it so that that other place isn't welcome. They're, they're feeding the information and the narrative that they want the child to have into the child's ears and they're indoctrinating them with lies. And the child is a child, so of course they believe their parent, right? They believe both parents. And it takes a long time to unwind and to see that your parent is acting this way. So those are some of the things that happen with loyalty binds and why children have a difficult time in these situations when they have loyalties that are overboard toward the narcissistic parent all of this creates parental alienation it is toxic and it is awful so if you have ever experienced this or if you have experienced this happening with your child or if you experienced it at yourself as a child of narcissistic parent let me know in the comments let's talk more about this hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe. If you need coaching or group coaching, check out the info in the main description and I will see you guys next time. Take care.